I mentioned not long ago about uh, validating a trend through a benchmarking technique. And that can be really important, especially to capture um, smaller shifts in a market and um, also to, um, to solve for some of the problems that having a really small set of data can, can bring. So this is how you can um, incorporate a larger set of data and validate that it's actually applicable to your trend. So I'm gonna get myself off of this screen. And this is InfoSparks. I use it a lot to, um, to capture data for uh, market trends. So this is just a, a zip code. I've filtered it for my subject property. This is one I'm, I'm working on as we speak. And you can see that long term, you can definitely see some, some trends, uh, but there's a lot of variability. So if there's other trends in, uh, you know, maybe micro trends in here that, that might be important to capture, it's going to be a little more difficult. Um, so what I can do is find a, a more stable benchmark. So I'm going to use the county. So the blue line is the county and the red line is the zip code. You can see that they track very similarly, but the variability in the Collin County trend line is much less. So I can feel confident in, uh, in using the Collin County data in order to, uh, to follow trends that are applicable to my subject market, but I don't have to worry about the, the higher level of variability in the smaller data set clouding my conclusions. So once we have these overlaid, I've really done a good job of establishing that, hey, this, uh, this larger data set as a benchmark um, really is valid for use in this assignment. And what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to take the data on the screen here. I'm going to pull it out of this program and I'm going to drop it into a custom Excel workbook that I've got for market indexing. And I'm going to, I'm going to grab a little bit more than what I just showed you. And I'm going to be able to create a custom index from that data. I'm going to have all the calculations for point-to-point uh, -point differences, the, uh, the visualization that the GSEs put out when they were um, trying to explain the type of market conditions uh, analysis that they were looking for. Uh, that was a little bit of a confusing visual, but the point was that we're really looking just to track point to point moments in time and where was the market at one point in time relative to another point in time. That's what indexing is great for. And so what will happen is when I drop all this in my custom workbook, it will make all those calculations. It will give me really good visuals to go with it for interpretation. And then I can decide, uh, hey, do I have a uh, a, a shift in the market during a particular time frame that that warrants an adjustment. So that's that's my process. That is the the piece I wanted to show you right now is that uh, that trend validation through benchmarking. So if you have questions, uh, reach out to me. If you want a little bit more information about my uh, my custom Excel workbook, it's actually available out there right now. I did a webinar back in October with Appraiser eLearning. It's still on their website. You can go uh, uh, take the two hour webinar and get the workbook for free as a part of the registration. And so that, um, you know, you, that, uh, that is a really great tool. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that as I you know, do these snippets of um, you know, little intricacies in the market conditions analysis. So I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have questions, comments, uh, feel free to reach out. Thanks.